Hi, my name is Jessica McAlpine, and today I will be teaching you about the amazing life cycle of a red blood cell. So, since you're learning about red blood cells today, I'm sure you're wondering, so where are red blood cells created? And surprisingly enough, they're not created in the heart, or in the lungs, or in a blood vessel. They are created in the red bone marrow. Okay, so before we get more into the life cycle of a red blood cell, what we want to do is let's take a step back and discuss how red blood cells are created. They are created in the red bone marrow. Through a negative feedback mechanism, kidneys secrete a hormone called erythropoietin in the red bone marrow. It is secreted when the amount of, of erythropoietin in the red bone marrow is low, and when the erythropoietin is low in the red bone marrow, the production of red blood cells decreases. So in order to increase the production of red blood cells, erythropoietin is secreted to stimulate that increase. So the usual lifespan of a red blood cell is 120 days, depending on how it turns out after it's been created. If it's damaged, it may have a shorter lifespan, just because it can't survive that long, and a macrophage might come and eat it. So when the red blood cell is born, it starts its 120 day lifespan, traveling throughout the body. It will team up with other red blood cells and be sent to tissues that need the products they carry. It will travel through the brain, the heart, the lungs, and other organs. And sometimes they escape into the outside world through many ways such as wounds or nosebleeds. Though the red blood cell is enjoying its life, its lifespan comes to a complete halt near the 120 day mark. The red blood cell can either be damaged or worn out, so they are sent to either the spleen, liver, or bone to be destroyed by a macrophage, which is a special white blood cell. Fun fact, did you know that sometimes bacteria can make its way into the bloodstream and stir up all kinds of trouble? Yes, and it is called bacteremia, and it is the process of bacteria entering the bloodstream. Okay, so going back to the end of a red blood cell's life cycle, there are two ways the red blood cell is broken down. The red blood cell can be broken down by hemolysis. Hemolysis is when a red blood cell is broken down so that the hemoglobin within the red blood cell is released, and once hemoglobin is released, it is then sent to the kidneys. Hemolysis is rare and only occurs with 10% of the red blood cells that are old or damaged. The other way a red blood cell can be destroyed is by the macrophage, which is either in the spleen, liver, or bone marrow. The macrophage destroys the red blood cell and its products are broken down. Amino acids, heme, iron, and biliverdin is released from the red blood cell. Heme is further broken down into iron, which is then transported back to circulation by a transferrin, and biliverdin is also broken down further. Going into a little bit more depth, biliverdin is sent to the liver and is then converted to bilirubin. Bilirubin is then sent to the kidneys and also secreted into bile, which is in the large intestine. Now bilirubin is sent to the large intestine from the liver, and after being excreted from the large intestine, the bilirubin-derived products become urobilins and stercobilins. Urobilins and stercobilins are then eliminated in the feces. And that is the end of the life cycle of a red blood cell. Thanks for watching and have a great day.